City. It's the Wendy Williams Show. survive the weekend. Let's get started. It's time for Hot Topics. Yeah, come on. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's louder than usual in here. Uh, today is Veterans Day, a day, a day where we respect and honor and are thankful for our military families and the military people who serve themselves. Um, I would suspect that there are a lot of school teachers and people who work in banking, people who love the day off. The big parade is here in New York. I can't believe that in 100 years or something like that of this parade being around, a president has never attended until today. So Donald Trump, President Trump is in the city. The traffic is may uh, mayhem. And um, anyway, enjoy your day, veterans. Oh, oh. Don't forget tomorrow, Whitney's longtime friend, Robin Crawford, will be here. <laughs> it's gonna be good conversation, I'll tell you. So, um, uh, we learned that Madonna is being sued by a man fan. Well, he's suing her, because I'm like, all right, sell me this story. Like, what is he suing for? What did she do now? Really? Well, apparently. Madonna changed the performance of her uh, concert uh, in Miami. Previously, it was supposed to be 7.30. Now, why is this Miami? I thought it was here in New York. Well, she's traveling. It's a tour. She's traveling from city to city. And okay. but this guy's tickets are December in Miami. OK. Why is he suing already? Right. OK. <laughs> Well, the show, the show is supposed to start at 7.30, but now um, it's, everyone's been informed, allegedly, that it's not gonna start until 10.30. Oh. Big deal! <laughs> She's a rock star. Which one of those people ever show up on time for anything? It's kind of like the anticipated, glamorous, you know, you show up when you show up, the crowd is ready, and then everyone dances. But he bought his tickets, three of them, for $1,000, and now he can't attend the show. Oh. Well, why can't you attend? You've already been informed the show is still gonna happen on that night, sir. And it won't be, it won't be at 7.30, sir. It'll be at 10.30. It's like, to me, when you, there are certain events that when you plan on going to them, you definitely clear your next day to recover and recoup. Now, maybe he works. I mean, you know, maybe he works an early job where he can't afford to take off. Maybe he goes in 8.30 in the morning. So at 7.30 that evening, you know, the, the, yeah, that, that worked into his schedule. But, so then you sleep real well for the days leading up to. You know how, you know how sometimes there, you know how sometimes there are events in your life that you have to sleep a lot for because you know what's about to happen? Like, I, I mean, we just got off the weekend, but already today I'm planning on getting more sleep all week because next weekend is gonna be on tilt. And, and I, I don't know what time I will ever come in the house. 
if I make it at all, have the bail money ready. Um, I'm going out with one of my favorite cut buddies and we are gonna get in trouble. So, but you know, as a woman of a particular age, you start planning for that. Like tonight, I'll go to bed maybe two hours. Every night, like I'll sleep a little bit more. So I don't think that this is Madonna's fault. Norman went to the show here in New York. I did. And now Norman said that his tickets were 7.30 too. Uh, 7.30 also, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but Madonna didn't get on stage until 10.30. Until 10.30. But, but you, you said you got an email. Yeah, they informed me the day before. Okay. I got a letter from the kingdom of Madonna <laughs> saying like she's not, you know she's not gonna be on, to, be on till 10.30, so don't show up till then. And, and I did. And, and you have to get up at 5.30 in the morning 5 to be 30. here. All <laughs> right. But you plan your sleep. Uh-huh. You informed your friends. Yep. Now how was the show? Excellent. Oh. Excellent. Thanks. <laughs> but Michael Lee, who's a bit more older than you, uh -huh. he's my Not age. Not by much, yeah. Yeah, he's my age. <laughs> Michael Lee here at the show for 11 years. Okay, Michael Lee did not get the email. Correct. So he, so he, so he showed, showed up, up the at show 730. at 7.30. And sat there. Oh. Well, <laughs> Mike, Michael Lee, why didn't you bring snacks? You know, or why don't you leave with the ticket in hand and go across the street and have a dinner or something like that or mingle in the lobby? Uh, like there's stuff. Seeing Madonna is not like seeing some people. That is an event. Yeah. I just have to say, that's all. Anyway. Yeah. So did you watch Real Housewives of Atlanta last night? Okay, good. Okay, good. So you did your homework, good co-host, good for you. All right, I was watching also. Um, Portia broke up with her fiance, Dennis, after he cheated on her. And then he asked her for the engagement ring back. It's a big, it's like one of those big rings too. Take a look. I said, if he give me the ring back and we Wait get back you together. Get back. No, he asked for it back. Let me get this straight. So there's all these rumors of cheating and drugs and animals and Dennis gets to take the rain back. <laughs> you know what? I had no idea that Portia had this type of maturity. I mean, you know, I'm a ring giver backer. You know, you're engaged and the engagement's not going down. You know what, you throw that thing at him. Now, even though he asked for it back, I was shocked that she gave it back. Like, Portia is, she's turned into such a woman in terms of the way she deals with things. I mean, we've known her since she was a dopey girl, but no, she turned that all the way around right in front of our eyes. You know, even if he didn't ask for the ring back, if I were Portia, I would have given it back to him anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, she could have always turned it into a brooch, you know, or, or had it crushed up and made a tennis bracelet out of it or something. But she did the right thing. Now, as to whether they're back together or not, I bet you they are, you know, as the plot thickens. Still no Nene last night, but I was telling you, Nene said to me that she isn't coming into like the third episode. So last night was the second episode of the new season. So then I guess she'll be there next week. Did you see Cynthia's daughter came out of the closet? Oh. oh, Cynthia's minding her own business, driving down the street. She's with Noel, the beautiful Noel. Too beautiful. They are really a beautiful mother and daughter, right? <laughs> They're driving down the street, and then Noel starts talking about her how you do in fluid life. Well, here's kind of what she said. She was like, um, you know, Cynthia was like, you know, how are the boys? And she's just driving along like a mom. How are the boys? And so Noelle says, well, mom, you know, I like boys and girls. Well, Cynthia still kept the car on the road, okay? <laughs>
She didn't hit a speed bump or anything. Cynthia just kept driving along, looking gorge, and Noelle was so comfortable with it that you couldn't help but love them as mother and daughter more. Cynthia embraced it. She didn't pull over. There was no fight that started. And so Cynthia's like, so who are you currently involved with? And Noelle said, well, currently I like girls, but who knows what'll happen? So, you know, hey, Noelle, how you doing? <laughs> Real Housewives airs every Sunday night on Bravo. Speaking of Housewives, over at the Real Housewives of Potomac, Pot Potomac, Pot <laughs> Potomac. Do you know the girl Monique Samuels? Well, she was charged with assault. <laughs> Honey, these people are too old to be getting charged with assault at this point in life. What kind of schoolyard mess is going on? All right. So Monique allegedly fought with her co-star Candace Dillard during a taping last month. Now we haven't seen that, but I have got the inside scoop for you and then we'll probably see it on the show because the cameras are there. Like these are two women just thumping. <laughs> Monique up atop allegedly grabbed Candace's hair down at the bottom and pulled her all the way down. <laughs> Reportedly, people had to jump on Monique to pull her off of Candace. Oh. Now, Candace threatened to beat Monique's behind like last season, but Candace was pregnant. So she said, if I wasn't pregnant, I'd jump all over you. Oh. Well, the jumpation happened. <laughs> Monique is married, Monique up here atop, married with three kids, okay? And the husband who used to play basketball football. Um, <laughs> a, she's got a six-year-old, a three-year-old, and an 11-year-old. 11 months old. How's mom fighting? And why are we fighting? I don't even know the origin of the fight. A plot line? I don't know. You know you all like a good fight, though. That, 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 that seems to keep people on the show. This makes me want to watch them. Like, you know, that's one of my favorite franchises anyway, so I, I watch anyway, but I don't, and I'm not really that familiar with these uh, girls. I'm more familiar with the girls who started out, you know, Ashley and them. Uh -huh. But I like their franchise. No, I was thinking no, because the Jets play the Redskins this, this next week, or this coming weekend. And so I might go down there and maybe, maybe one of these girls has like an extra ticket or I don't have my tickets yet. No, but I, but I know somebody, ex, some of the executives at the Redskins so I could sit in the box, but I don't want to root for the Redskins. I, I want to root for the J-E-T-S. Yeah. So good. I was, um, <laughs> I was supposed to be, and like this weekend, a big football weekend here in New York, Jets versus Giants, you know, it, like there is no loser in this because we all love both of the teams, but I'm a Jet. And so, you know, I was gonna sit in the Johnson, they own the team. I was gonna sit in the Johnson's booth, and booth, I mean, <laughs> sorry, booth. <laughs> booth, and, and, and eat firm shrimp, you know, with the cocktail sauce and stuff and have a good old time. I was gonna wear green, and then they ended up winning, but I was so worn out from the night before. Now, the game wasn't until one o'clock over at MetLife in Jersey, right? And um, I was so worn out when I woke up. I said, I can't move about last night. <laughs> okay, so Saturday night was the party that me and Dr. Oz hosted together at his compound. Wait, no, 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 show it by itself so you don't cut off Bernty. There you go. Uh-huh. So um, Saturday, Oz and I have been planning this party for like a month and a week, all right? How, who was gonna be invited? We wanted to curate people with interesting conversation. Doesn't matter whether we all know each other or not. It's gonna be grown fun. He has a dining room table at his compound. Doesn't it look like we're in the Oval Office or something? Yeah. Let me tell you something about that Dr. Oz. He is living, okay. So, so, we're back and forth over who to invite. Now mind you, he's having, this, this whole party was my idea. I insinuated myself on him, but Dr. Oz likes to entertain. 
So we're both doing really well. We're both in our 11th season. I said, Oz, let's have a good old adult party before the holidays come in and everybody leaves town. He's like, Wendy, great idea. He said, look, Lisa and Daphne, his, his wife and his daughter, will get all the food together and, 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 you know, all right, who do we invite? So we're back and forth texting in between doing our shows for the last, like, month and five weeks. Back and forth texting, all right, who are we going to have? So this is our final cut. All right, now let me show you exactly who's there. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right here is local newscaster on PIX11 in New York, Tamson Fidel, who's a friend of mine. Tamson arrives at my apartment so we can go together. Right here is radio superstar at iHeartRadio, Elvis Duran. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right. And there's Elvis's husband, Alex. Okay, okay, okay. Then. There's John. John is married to local newswoman here in New York, Rosanna Scotto, who's right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Okay, then there's Steve. Steve is married to Joy Behar. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Believe me you, this, this was one of the best times of my life, and I'm not talking about new life, I'm talking about all 55 years. All, it, it was a wonderful, it, six hours that I'll never get back. I could have stayed for another three. All right, all right, then there's Lisa Oz and me, Wendy. I'm where, uh-huh. And then, okay, wait, okay. And then there's, of course, Dr. Oz. There's Daphne Oz and her wonderful husband, John. They live on the same property. There are two mansions on one property. Let me tell you something about this Oz family, honey. The dogs were running around, but you know, they weren't bothersome. They were civilized. They weren't bothering anyone. Um, I don't recall who this is. I, and I apologize. I know you had a jumpsuit on in green that I really, really liked. But once we sat down, you disappeared. Anyway, and, and there, there's Rosanna Scotto, and of course, Joy, and my manager, Bernie. Yay! Oh, oh, wait, oh, hold on. Okay, do you see the table right there? Okay, so it was appetizers and libations from six to seven. The appetizer, let me tell you something about this food right here, okay? I had my doggy, I went with a doggy bag. <laughs> and inside the doggy bag, it was big enough to hold my hot sauce. Uh-huh, I liked the Lowry's garlic, the California blend. And I also had, uh-huh, and I also had some A1 sauce, you know. <laughs> I put it on the table, I shared it with everybody. People were stunned. I'm like, ugh, are you serious with this? Look, the good crackers, there was all kinds of salami and grapes and, and spicy peppers. I could have just eaten this and gone home, right? So then we go into the dining room and we had from seven o'clock to 12.15, we laughed and joked and it was just, I can't tell you about what went on there, but let's just say, New life is good life. Yeah. 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 Really good. Really good. So, by the time I got home from there, I was like, oh, J-E-T-S, I can't go. And I was supposed to be going with Bernie. Me and Bernie were gonna go. And I said, hello, Bernie. He said, huh? I said, you don't want to move either? He said, no. I said, okay, we'll just watch on TV and root for the J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 and then they won. So then, all right, that was one event this weekend. Uh, but on the last show of the day, you know, the, the studio's quiet, only James is outside my dressing room, and there are a few people, you know, working around, you know, in the edit bay and stuff like that. And I get a knock at my door. Now, after we finish like a double show Thursday, I sit in my office like, <sighs> I was sitting there in a bra and panty. <laughs> Look, I mean, it's my office. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'd taken off my costume, took off the show wig. I'm sitting there with natural hair, you know, <laughs> watching TV, trying to gather myself to go home only to tumble back in bed. It's great about Kevin, you know, being away at school now because I don't have to rush home to make dinner or whatever. I know that, uh, you know, I can leave whenever I want. I get home how I want. I do what I want. So I'm sitting there like, uh, and I'm watching TV and James knocks at the door. 
I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I don't ask for a lot around here. I just ask for punctuality. And if I'm in my office at a particular time, and James, you and I spend a lot of time together, you know there's certain times that I don't like to be disturbed. Like after a two show Thursday. <laughs> He's knocking. I was like, what, James? He says, you've got company. I said, I don't want company. Who's he? Like, what? I looked at my phone, nobody had called me. I look at the phone in the office, nobody called that phone. I'm like, who called? No, nobody, somebody's just popping by. So he says, you're gonna like this company. I said, oh, wait, hold on now. <laughs> yeah, hold on. Let me put on a negligee. <laughs> but I was so comfortable, I forgot to put a wig on. You know how so, you know, sometimes you get, if you're a wiggy, then you know sometimes you're so comfortable, you might even get to your front door about to go someplace and say, ooh, I forgot my wig. <laughs> uh, James opens the door and who is it? Tiffany Haddish. <laughs> oh. Yeah. We sat and cackled like two college girls for like an hour and a half. Just, it wasn't about me putting on a wig. Um, she's doing her movie with Billy Crystal here in New York. She was on the block. She saw my picture up there. She's like, this is where Wendy, t well, I'm going in. <laughs> And she didn't call me, she's got my number, she didn't call, she wanted to surprise. And I just sat there and we just laughed. And you know what I like cool friends? It wasn't about taking a selfie to put on social media. Like this was taken a while ago. You know, we don't, we don't no current picture, you know, in there or anything like that. But shout out to Tiff. And you know what? She's part of my weekend programming too. Do you watch that kids say the darndest things? Yeah. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> anyway, um, oh. Oh, you know what I found out over the weekend? Yeah, shout out to Darius in Virginia, the 11 year old who loves to dance like Michael Jackson, but act like me. He made me this bracelet, I still been wearing it. So I found out over the weekend that Darius's grandmother passed. And we, all of us, cheering about him and everything like that, and then we were, we're the light of his life. His mother emailed my chief to say, you know, tell Wendy, thank you. You know, Darius is going through a hard time right now, but this little bracelet and us saying awe to him, Darius, <laughs> Darius, hang in there, kiddo. All right, look, that's it for Hot Topics, but we got more great show for you. The Inside Scoop is coming up with Sharon Carpenter. She's talking about rap beef. So grab a snack and come on back. And here with all the dishes, our entertainment journalist friend, Sharon Carpenter. Hi. Welcome back. Great to see you, Wendy. In all velvet. Thank you, yeah, mm. I'm trying to keep warm. It's cold Beautiful. out there. Beautiful, I know, tell me. Yeah. All right, so what's going on with uh, Sharon Stone? Okay, so new rap feud alert. We had Drake versus Pusha T. We had Cardi B versus Nicki Minaj. Now we have Sharon Stone versus Chanel West Coast. And of course, so yeah, you're wondering who is that, right? Uh, no, course, not me. I watch Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that yeah, on yeah, MTV. You, you like her. So Sharon mm -hmm. Stone, of course, from Basic Instinct. Uh, we know her from that iconic scene, the leg crossing situation, and other Hollywood movies as well. Chanel West Coast is the co-host of Ridiculousness on MTV. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're Fan, mm -hmm. and she was also on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood uh, for one season. I don't now she, that. yeah, yeah, okay. just for one season though. So she put out a song over a year ago called Sharon Stoned. Sharon Stone herself has caught wind of it. She is not happy about it. In fact, she's suing Chanel West Coast. Why? Because stoned implies getting high. That is certainly part of it. Yeah, she's okay. not happy about this song, and she wants the song and the music video pulled forever. Sharon is basically saying that Chanel is profiting from her extraordinary uh, fame uh, and popularity and Come using on, her name Sharon. without her consent. Yeah. Now listen to this. According to the lawsuit, she says Sharon Stone's name 99 times in the song. When you add it up, it equals to one minute and 12 seconds of a less than five minute song. You look at the music video, she's certainly channeling Sharon Stone there, uh, spoofing Ah, oh, she looks the, great. Uh, she looks pretty good. Is that mm -hmm. Redman, by the way? And Michael uh, Rappaport. Rappaport right there. Yep. 
Uh, so there's that basic instinct moment. Uh, there's a casino moment in there as well. But Sharon is most pissed about the fact she feels that this song, like you said, implies that she supports weed smoking. I didn't Sharon think that. Stoned. I think that Sharon is a woman of a particular age. And when these young people, you know, say her name, it brings her into relevance to certain people who don't know her. Now, I know a Sharon Stone. Yeah, well, you know, I just saw her. She's 61 years old now. She was just at the GQ Awards. She looks amazing. Yeah. She, yeah. she looks absolutely amazing. So she wants no parts of it. And I don't know if you've heard the song, but the song sucks. And I actually don't blame her. It's pretty bad. I've never heard it before. I only know the girl from Ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Most of us haven't heard the song, but if you listen to it, you'll understand why Sharon isn't too happy about it. Now, Chanel has a completely different version of events. She says that Sharon knew about the song for a year leading up to the release of the song and the video as well. Wanted to be in the video. They had meetings, their reps were involved, and even went to two dance rehearsals where they took a photo behind the scenes that she's using as evidence to say Sharon knew about this all along. Where's the photo? Why don't we see it? Uh, yeah, we don't have the photo in our uh -huh. hands, unfortunately. We need to see it, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, she's also saying uh, that she went ahead with the music video shoot, Sharon came down there and then changed her mind for no reason at all, no explanation. They continued to shoot the music video anyway, uh, and now this has occurred. Sharon said nothing about this. So TMZ, her... though, caught up with Chanel? TMZ, yes, they did. They recently caught up with her after saying, you know, she says that she's really hurt by this whole situation. But take a look at this. I think she's throwing a little shade. It, Sharon. There's so many songs where people have made the title of the song about a famous, you know, person from the past. I don't think that there's any reason to be suing me. I think that all I did was something like nice for her in a way. Um, sure. You know, like I have young friends who, when I made the song, didn't even know who Sharon was. So, like, in a way, like I've kind of like made her relevant to some young people again. Ouch. I didn't what do you see that as Wendy? Shade. I saw yeah. that her is talking, and I think that Sharon Stone needs to be quiet with this because there are people, Chanel's age, who don't know who Sharon Stone is. I mean, even when they watch True. Casino, one of my favorite movies, yeah, they still it. don't know who Sharon Stone is. They're, like, there's this soon-to-be washed-up rapper who can't keep my name out of its mouth. And I, I love it. I sit here like, okay, <laughs> keep talking. Ooh. <laughs> Say some more. Chanel was until Sharon Stone sued her, and I think a lot of us didn't, so I think it works. But okay, ways clap at the end if you knew day. who Chanel was. I and what about if you know who Sharon is? Sharon Stone. Yeah. 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 All right, look. Let's move on to the cheating scandal in the OC. Oh, this is a juicy one, yeah. Former OC housewife, uh, Megan King um, Edmonds. Uh, she is going through a divorce right now from her former baseball star husband, Jim Edmonds, and it is he getting wanted that really divorce. nasty. It sounds like it. He wants it? Yeah. the divorce. It is mm -hmm. getting nastier and nastier by the day. They have been married for five years, mm -hmm. looking like the picture-perfect couple, by the way. They have three kids. Uh, they have a three-year-old daughter. They have twin boys who are both one. Now, the drama first began last summer, she says that she sat down with him during the summer and he admitted to sexting another woman, uh, exchanging nude photos and sending a video of him pleasuring himself, let's just say. Oh. And all while she was pregnant with the twins, <laughs> a difficult pregnancy <laughs> and <sex. laughs> A difficult pregnancy and it gets even worse. Apparently he sent that video on the day that she gave birth. I just said, it's just, uh, to me, that's just unforgivable. Now, he says uh, that there was no physical cheating involved. It oh. was purely the sex thing. She says, well, that's cheating anyway. It was going on for months. And he also says that he only met this woman on one occasion, and that was to pay her off because she was threatening to expose the story to the press, which is what happened anyway. She's been exposed herself as the baseball madam. That's what she's known as, because apparently she's been involved. Yeah, with she's done this players. a few times, no, uh, apparently. Now, what about him being at the hockey game with their 23-year-old oh, so, nanny? Oh, can you believe it? Yes. So <laughs> Me Megan stuck around just to find out two weeks ago that he went to a hockey game with their 22-year-old nanny. Uh, OK. Yeah. And, and there they he's are. making every excuse. He's saying, oh, no, 
well, her boyfriend just dumped her, so I was just looking out for her, showing her a good time. But apparently, according to Megan, they were in the bar till 1.30 a.m. and deleted a bunch of text messages between them. So she's like, OK, what's up with this? This is totally my, inappropriate. My thing is, is that if you're going to go to a hockey game with your 22-year-old nanny, then you tell your wife, you know, you know, um, she's not in a good place. I got the ticket for, tickets for the hockey game. Exactly. You know, so I'm going. But didn't he bring along some other friends, he took too? He a friend. I don't see any friends, friends in there, because he could have said to the wife, look, babe, get a babysitter that night. We'll, oh, we'll both take her to the hockey game. Exactly. Cheer her up. And in, in fact, he lied to Megan about it. So she's like, OK, what is really going on here? He says that this young woman is like a daughter to him, but if that's the case, I mean, he has seven kids, right? If that's the case, why did he lie about it? Because he was looking for a way out of this marriage. Good luck with you all's divorce. Uh, thank you for being here, Sharon Carpenter, everybody. Check out The Royal Report, Thursdays at 5.30 on People TV. Up next, the hottest celebrity makeup trends. Mally is here, don't go far. <laughs> It's good. Um, hi. Uh, here to show us the hottest celebrity makeup trends is our friend, Nally Roncal. Yeah! Welcome back. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Hi. Teach us what to do. Oh, honey, it is time. Well, first of all, let's talk about a little lips. You want to do a little lip party? Let's go. Let's go. Right. Hi, there Jessica. Jessica the is here. OK, we've got our bourgeois, Miss Priyanka Chopra. Up OK. In the house. Okay, so do you know what a lip topper is? No. Okay. A lip topper? Yeah, get ready. This is an iridescent okay. lip topper. And what this is, it's a secret little trick that not only is gonna make your lips look big and juicy uh -huh. and gorgeous, what? what? But you see that gorgeous sort of holographic? Yeah. Look, right? So it's, it's like, like an opal. Yes, Opal-y. exactly. A little mother of pearl action giving you that gorgeous look. So the great thing about it is, guys, no matter what lipstick you wear, whether you like a nude or a red or whatever. Just top your lips. Top it on, girl. Right? Perfect. Like, and look how pretty and holiday-esque. Here, take that. Yeah, is this, is this your brand? Yeah, it might be. Oh, wait, no, you do good stuff, too. <laughs> Thanks, Jessica. So, <laughs> hey, girl, hey. We'll get you some, Jess. Okay. Now, you know Miss Wendy loves a strong brow. I do. Right? Everybody should do a I little do. strong brow. I'm going to tell you why. Miss Solange is showing us a strong brow. <laughs> Who likes eyebrows up in here? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Why? Because not only it's does... It's useful. It is. Thank you. Remember when we did the real skinny? Yeah, one? I had the real skinny, I, too. So thank did I. God I they grew back. Exactly. Thank you. And sometimes they don't. But if they don't... Janiel. Exactly. Do you like a strong brow? Is this your first time? It's my first time. Okay. Oh, strong brow that. virgin in the house! <laughs> Here we go! So here's the trick. You want to make sure that you brush the brow up because you want to work with everything you got. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Brush it up and then take a brow pencil, short feathery strokes, but fill that brow in. I like guys. a tail too. Do you like a tail? Oh, honey, I like a I nice like a tail. long one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And take it all the way, all the way out to the end of the eye. And not only doesn't it make your, not only your eyes look bigger, but your face looks skinny. Yeah, the, the, an eyebrow, I never discovered it until years ago that I was like, wait, now hold on. Yeah. And yeah. also if you use an almost done mascara in a dark color, you can just mascara up. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Uh -huh. Makeup to hack from Jimmy. Wendy. Yes. And then you're right. getting every hey, brow Kristen. that you have. Exactly. OK, so here we go. Mm. Emma Stone. Oh, you want to see something? Yeah, a palette oh. Oh. with a mirror in <laughs> So you can see your face. All right, right, so here's the trick. Let's talk about a little glitter eyeliner. Oh, okay. boy, here we go. Uh, you knew I had to give it to her at the end. I'm All nervous. Right, go ahead. All right, here's the thing. Let's just say glitter is not just for teeny bobbers or drag queens That's anymore. That's what I think. And that, well, not, you listen, I tell you, it's also a trick to add a little brightness to the eye to make you look like maybe you've had eight hours of sleep to really brighten, okay? okay. Go ahead. But if you are afraid of a little glitter, you know what you can do. You can just wet an eyeshadow. Okay. Wet a shimmery eyeshadow and just tap it on on top of your liner. You see that? Oh, that's easy. So it adds a little bit of brightness and lightness, yeah. but it's not full on glitter. But yeah. don't be afraid of glitter, y'all. It's holiday time. I know. Uh, How do you celebrate? <laughs> Wendy. With this? This is good enough for me. 
We get to like to get a little festive, but adding that brightness. But the trick is this too. If you do want to go with glitter, don't go to the craft store like mama's done in the past. And, and you wake up with pink eye. Yes. And scratch cornea. You know. You did it too. I've done it. I knew it. Uh, I knew it. Exactly. Nelly, thank so, you yes. so much thank for you. the tip. Thank for you. more information on these trends, go to wendyshow.com. Ask Wendy thank is you. next. Really? Day 18. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, it's time for Ask Wendy. Come on over. First of all, I love your fashion. Yes. That's $35 for every at the mall. And, then, and, uh, oh uh, and yours too. Can you sit down, madam? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> Look, <laughs> and he's telling. He's, he's telling me that he watched our show from the very first Six day. week sneak yeah. peek. Look, yeah. he's from Queens, but he never heard of me at all. But all he's like, what is this mess? But I like it. Okay. <laughs> so who are you? My name is Brandon Isaiah. Okay. Como estas? Como estas? <laughs> so I'm in a bit of a sicky situation. Okay. So Brandon. my ex from six years ago okay. reached out to me. He wants to be friends, strictly platonic. I have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I'm currently talking to a guy. And I love how things go. Boyfriend is the goal. Friday night, my ex and his boyfriend broke up. Now, I'm a cancer of every intuitive. He's kind of hunching on getting back together. Now, I am currently happy with the guy I'm with. Leave him alone. No friendship, no nothing, no. nada? No. OK. No, you've got a goal. You want to be booed up. Mm -hmm. Booed up. The husband. Right. All right. <laughs> Good luck, Brendan. Thank you. And thank you for watching. <laughs> Come on over. Oh. Uh, how you doing? Uh, how you doing? So who are you? I'm Karen from Washington, D.C. OK. <laughs> Welcome, Karen. What do you do? I'm a financial manager. Okay, now how can I help you, Karen? Oh, Wendy, okay. Uh -oh. oh, dear. <laughs> so I have a friend who uh, was engaged. Uh -huh. She was planning a very huge wedding. Okay. I went out, caught her man with another woman, Whoa. lips locked. I went back and I said something to her. She called off the wedding, canceled our friendship. Oh. He, yeah. He ended up <laughs> marrying someone else. So I got kicked to the curb. I got X out of all social media. I haven't talked to her in two years. So my question to you is, I miss my friend. Should I call her? Aww. Well, no, just relax. <laughs> Here's my thought. Mm -hmm. How old are you? Um, I'm a particular age. OK. <laughs> um, um, how long have you, you and your friends been friends? 10 years. Yeah. A long time. And how long were they together before you found her with another woman? Two years. Two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's been two years also since you've spoken to her. Correct. She's moved on and she's in another relationship. Yes. I'm assuming. But you know what? I say call her. You know, you know why? You know why? Because we're all grown. Mm -hmm. You know, she ended up breaking up with the man after all. And you, you miss her. Like, I do. you know, I want to cry. Like, you miss her. Give it a one shot deal. Mm -hmm. Call her if she doesn't answer, then text her. Mm -hmm. And then follow it up with an email. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> All, no, no, no. All in the same day. Oh. And if you don't hear from her, then it's done. Let it go. OK? okay. All right. Yeah. We've got time for more. Come on over. Oh, wait, no, wait. Hold on, everybody. Up next, there's an audience member who can win $1,500 at the most. It's a lot of money on the line. Keep it here. Drop it like it's Hot Topics. Heather is here from Pennsylvania, and you have a chance to, oh, only one chance, Heather, to win up to 1,500 bucks. Yeah. The interesting thing about Heather is that she's been here to our show 11 times. Yes, yes, yes. And she's a pricing analyst. Yes. So you take off from work, you come to the show. Yes. And look, it's really weird because we're in our 11th season. Yes. Okay, and the luck goes even further because today is November 11th. 11. All right. Big money, big money. Are you ready? I stay on ready, Wendy. Okay. 
Hit the music, drop it like it's hot top. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. When the kids try to get it, park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. Park it like it's hot. If them get an attitude, pop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. When the kids try to get it. There you go. For one thousand dollars, how many Grammys does Adele have? 10, 15, or 20, go. She has 15 Grammys. You got it, you got it, thousand dollars. We'll be right back, yeah. Ready? Yes. And away we go. It's time to race the clock. Let's meet our player. What's your name, where are you from, what do you do? My name's Allison, I'm from Washington, D.C. Okay. I'm a communications director. How you doing, Wendy? How you doing, Allison? <laughs> okay, you got 30 seconds to race the clock. Did you watch the awards last night? Where I, uh, congratulations, Ellen, you won again. <laughs> anyway, uh-huh, she's the people's choice. All right. So, I didn't watch, but I do know the, the nominees Okay. the one. Shout okay. out Kris Jenner. Keeping up with the Kardashians won for Best Reality Show at the People's Choice Awards last night. Name four other nominees and go! Uh, we've got Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, good. Uh, the one with the four, the four gay guys. Queer Eye, Queer Eye. Jersey Shore. Uh, and Vanderbilt Rules. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jennifer Two and American Whiskey will be right back. <laughs> a good hug, I too. You, Where are you I'm from? Montclair, New Jersey. Okay. Yes, um, yes, the lady back there gave me a bag of Jolly Ranchers. I got some hand warmers, and the and love in good. here is so real, right? <laughs> Tomorrow, everybody, please tune in for my explosive one-on-one -on -one with Robin Crawford and her life with Whitney Houston. Plus, I got you covered with the hot topics. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye. <laughs>